book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion have roared, who would not fear? The Lord power have spoken, who can but prophesy? That's exactly what we are doing. And the Lord is speaking clearly. So our job as the mouthpiece of the Lord is to prophesy. It's all about giving, family blowing the trumpet, making sure Israel, the so-called Latinos, the so-called blacks, the so-called Native American, African American are taking heed. That's why we were put on this planet. That's it. Our purpose is to prepare the elect for the coming kingdom. And we are indeed grateful, yes, for these tasks that the Lord has placed upon our shoulders and we don't take it for granted. All praises, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. His name is Yahweh and his only begotten son, the first spirit ever created, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah. His name is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai simply translates into the Paleo Hebrew. He is the deliverer. He is the deliverer. And he's coming to redeem the elect of Israel. The past 48 hours, there's so many things happening. And as uh, we always do, family, it's all about prophecy. The prophecies are the things that are happening. The signs that Yahweh Shai told us in the book of, throughout the, the, the old, uh, sorry, the New Testament. That these are the things that you should be watching out for. Rumors of war, wars, chaos, calamities. It's all coming together. <clears throat> it's all coming together. We are about to go home. We are about to go home. We are about to go home. And to you, the hopeful elect, let's say Shalom and let's get into it. This is our friend from the Canadian prepper. We know that there was a major attack in Russia, This, uh, sorry, in Crimea. Yeah, Crimea is part of Russia. But things are escalating and we're going to allow uh, our friend from Canadian prepper uh, to, um, you know, to up, you know, just give us an update as to what is happening. I have a couple of uh, news articles that we're going to get into and we're going to bring the... Um, the precepts and again to glorify our power, Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai. That's right. It says the lion have roared. That's right. Okay. The trumpet is being blown loud and clear. We are seeing what is happening. The third world war is at the corner. Every nation is preparing for it. And our job as the mouthpiece is to warn you and tell you that the king is coming because he made it clear that he is going to show up in the midst of that third world war. The last war to end all wars. Since I, I brought it up, I must well bring a, a precept. Let's go to the book of, uh, let's go quickly. I want to open an, another window here. Bear with me. Let's go to Revelation quickly. Revelation uh, 8, 14, I believe. Revelation 8, 14 first. It says here, 13. Is it 13? Yes, 13. It says Revelation uh, verse 8. Okay, Revelation 8, 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, eh? saying with a loud voice, Woe, that's the first woe. Woe, that's the second woe. Woe, woe means destruction. Let's bring it out quickly. Let's go, let's look at woe. What does woe mean? Woe. Let's listen to it. This is the Greek word. Strong's G, 3759, Uai. Uai. Okay, let's get it. What is that? Alas, whoa. That's where, what is the, um, let me see if I can get the, uh, 
the root word. I thought, I thought we had it here. Woe means destruction, family. Woe simply means destruction. So we know that we had what as first and second world war. The first world war was what nineteen fourteen to nineteen nineteen. So it sort of like ended between eighteen and nineteen. Okay, from nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen, and then the second world war was um, nineteen thirty nine to nineteen forty five. And here, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. Family, we have received. We have received. Revelation 11, 14. It says here. Revelation 11. No, 11, Revelation 11, 14. It says here. The second war is past, which was the second world war. Remember, it was three wars that were mentioned. The second war is past, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. The third war cometh quickly. That's the third world war. Family, we are here to prophesy and, and give honor and glory to the power of Abraham. Family, our power is the only one, only one that can declare the end from the beginning. Family, and we are extremely grateful. Okay, we are extremely grateful. Let's go to, um, again, the lion have roared, who will not fear? The Lord have spoken, and who can but prophesied we are telling you that this is what the lord said before the foundation of the earth that there will be three wars okay three wars three world war and family we are about to go through the last world war and the lord says that what he's gonna make an appearance in the midst of let's get it let's get it quickly let's go to revelation 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 12 i think it's six or oh, seven. Oh, seven. Okay. And there was war in heaven. This is Esau's heaven. Okay. That's the war is going to be here. Okay. The third world war is going to be here. This is Esau's heaven. It's a Michael and his angel. Because the king says what? Uh, in uh, in uh, Daniel 12, 1. That what? Things are going to be so bad that Michael and the angels are going to show up, right? To defend the children of Israel, roughly paraphrasing. So Michael and the angel along with Yahawashai, here he says, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the what? The dragon. That's Esau's, Esau's uh, army. Hmm? And the dragon fought and his angels. And what happened to them? Let's go to the next verse. And what? And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The third world war is coming. And we know what's going to happen at the end. They don't have a chance against the second coming of our king, Yahweh Shai. That's why we are here to give honor and glory to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukakotaj. Family, we are about to go home. Let's allow the, uh, Anita to uh, update us as to what is happening the past 48 hours. Let's go. Again, I don't own this video. I'm not benefiting from it, family. Fair use art, fair use art, fair use art. Okay? Commentary, education, and teaching. That's it. I don't own any, I don't own this video. I'm not making any money off it. All right. We have some dramatic developments in the last 48 hours. The United States is sending a nuclear emergency response team to Ukraine to lay down some radiation detectors throughout the country in anticipation that Russia might use a nuclear weapon in response to the Ukrainian counteroffensive if it is in fact successful. What you're seeing behind me here is a major oil refinery in a peninsula in uh, Sevastopol in Crimea. Of course, Crimea is of great strategic utility for the Russian Navy. It is one of the first places that they annexed back in 2014, and the Ukrainians are hell-bent on taking it back. Now, there's been a lot of stuff that's been happening, but this in and of itself is a big eyesore. It's a win for the Ukrainians, uh, if only in terms of the optics. Of course, it's a very apocalyptic looking scene, quite reminiscent of what we've seen back in Ohio at the train derailment. And these oil fires are very hard to contain, but the Russians did have a foam uh, agent that was able to extinguish this fire in relatively short order. So it has been extinguished, but understand what the implications of this are. We are currently on the warpath to World War III. Poland today 
has seized part of the Russian embassy. Okay, the Russians are calling this a violation of the Geneva Convention. And uh, this no doubt is going to bring all sorts of reprisals. They've already had threats levied against them by the former Russian president, the one and only Dmitry Medvedev, who says that basically Poland should be effectively wiped off the map and that they will uh, exterminate them with extreme prejudice. So it's not looking good in terms of uh, de-escalation of this conflict. Uh, that's just but one of the many things that has transpired. There was a testimony given by a U.S. general. I believe that it was at a European uh, House Committee meeting that was discussing matters of uh, NATO military. And he had said that the Russian activity under the water, their Arctic activity, their Atlantic activity, their nuclear submarine activity has ratcheted up. And that this was of great concern because this indicates that in spite of any losses that they might be occurring on the Ukrainian front, the Russian military is in fact stronger than before the war started. And that this uh, massive deployment of nuclear submarines was a testament. The book of Zechariah 14, 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Jerusalem are people before it became a place. Wherever the Israelites are, whether it's a small sanctuary, that's known as Jerusalem. Whether it's in Harlem, eh? whether it's in Queens, everywhere that our people are, that is known as Jerusalem. There were people before it became a place. So the Lord was referring to his people, the so-called Latinos, Blacks, Native American, African Americans, Negroes spread across the four corners of the world. We are the Hebrew Israelites. He says here, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. All you have to do is watch the movie, The Terminator 2. Okay, there's a scene in there, family, look it up. That's where you see America on fire. I think it was a dream by one of the actress, uh, Linda Hamilton, when she was standing by the fence, the, the, the barbed wire fence. Is it barbed wire fence? It was a, it's like literally, it's like literally daydreaming and saw America on fire. Oh yeah, fam, don't, don't get it twisted. The elite, they know. They know what is about to take place. They know what is about to take place. But we have to prophesy, tell you before it happens. That's what prophecy means telling you what is coming it says here and this shall be the plague wherewith the lord yahweh our heavenly father the power of abraham isaac and jacob the only power that matters all the nations and their gods they are nothing but idol that's right will smite all the people that have fought against jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and that's what the only thing that's going to cause someone eyes melting is going to be nuclear it's going to be nuclear missiles, nuclear war. That's what's going to cause that. It says here, all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, their flesh, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth, says the Lord. Let's continue. This. So we're going to be talking about that and other things today on the channel. The Putin assassination attempt, although denied by the Kremlin as being hyped up by a German tabloid called Bild. Well, this tabloid is not really a tabloid. In fact, they just interviewed Boris Pistorius, who is German's defense minister. So I doubt that the German defense minister would give an in interview to a, you know, strictly tabloidal news agency. It's funny because a lot of the... Uh, Russian apologist media like Zero Hedge will come on and, and reiterate the Kremlin's view of this, that this wasn't, in fact, an assassination attempt of Vladimir Putin. However, they, they really are very selective with who they call a tabloid because this is a news agency. I'm talking about Zero Hedge, if you can even call it that. They quote the Daily Mail all the time, and the Daily Mail has always been considered, for the most part, a tabloidal news agency anyways build is not a tabloid in fact it, it has been confirmed that a drone loaded to the nines with around 17 
kilos of C4 was intended for a location that Putin was bound to visit right around the time when that drone was taken down, likely by a, some sort of electronic warfare device. So this is very serious. There's speculation as to who is behind the assassination. Was it the Ukrainian secret services, as was suggested by the Build, German Build uh, article? Or was it rogue elements within the Ukrainian military? There are even people saying that it might have been elements, defectors within Russia who wanted to <clears throat> do this. Of course, the same people who said that, um, uh, you know, Nord Stream, the Russians did that to themselves. I imagine that if Moscow got nuked, that there'd be people saying that it was the Russians who did it. So we have to really be very, very skeptical right now of every single thing, all kinds of media that's coming out of this situation. Nothing can be trusted at this point in time. As I said, I showed you the apocalyptic scene at Sevastopol. That is something out of a movie. We have Russia mounting guns on several of the nuclear reactors because this is likely the direction in which Ukraine will be staging their counteroffensive from. And Poland has effectively declared war on Russia's embassy there, so we can expect a mass expulsion of diplomats. And guys, when this happens, there's a reason why Poland is being built up militarily in the way that it is and pledging to be one of Europe's largest militaries. Now, they are very concerned that if and when, like whatever ruse Russia is up to right now by misdirecting the Ukrainians in Crimea, by moving whole military bases, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, but there's a lot of concern that the Russians are now going to take the entire country of Ukraine and when they do of course they're going to be smack dab on the border of Poland and that's when the war with NATO is going to begin. There's so many different theories being thrown around. Will Poland unify with Ukraine and then will that be how uh, Ukraine is absorbed within NATO to evoke Article 5 or will Poland act independently thus not warranting NATO to come into the conflict, keeping it on the conventional level. But understand the timeline of events. The United States nuclear emergency response team is in Ukraine laying down radiation sensors in anticipation of Russia using nuclear weapons. There's a lot of people who have a very short-term memory. In fact, the majority of people, this is human nature, this is human psychology. Even the most uh, potent preppers amongst us and this is why I always, I, I, whenever somebody comes to me and says, hey man, you really motivated me to prepare. I've done this, 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 this. And they're really excited and overly exuberant about preparedness. Those same people tend to be the ones when nothing happens immediately, all of a sudden they're like, oh, like they go in the complete opposite direction and they just rationalize it in their mind that okay, I guess nothing has happened, so nothing can happen. This is classic normalcy bias. In fact, I had a friend yesterday, we're shooting a video, and she was talking about how, you know, she doesn't think anything bad could. That's great, that's great. A quick precept here. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 12. One. It says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, mm -hmm. while the evil days come not. This is the time you seek him. Do the best that you can. We are about to go home, family. Do the best. Seek the Lord. It says, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Don't call when S-H-I-T hit the fan. It will be too late. The Lord is not listening to you. But this is the time. It says, remember now, thy creator. This is the time you remember the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. The same thing Noah did. Telling everybody, this is what is happening. This is what is coming. And guess what? They didn't take heed. But the elect will hear this word. And they will take heed and Lord willing, they will be delivered. And that's the only reason why we are here. The kingdom is coming. 
the world, the Lord is not, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the world is not coming to an end. This age is coming to an end. This age. Because again, the book of Ecclesiastes, actually, let's go to it quickly. Ecclesiastes 1, I think 4, I believe it's 4. Let's see if we can bring it up. Is it 4? Yes. It says here, one generation passeth away and another generation cometh. But the earth, you hear that? The earth abided forever. Again, it tells you in the book of what? Uh, 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. It said Esau, this current rulership, the so-called white man, his rulership is coming to an end. And Jacob's is next. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is coming. Family, this is how close we are. This is how close we are to the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be on this planet. You hear that? The earth abided forever. Yahweh Shai is going to turn this back into the garden of Eden. That's why he says, go and preach to the house, sorry, to the lost, the lost uh, tribe of Israel. Okay? The lost sheep of Israel. It's a, no, before I butcher it, let me get it. Uh, I said, uh, should uh, preach. Uh, uh, Oh man, I'm trying to find the proper word. Please bear with me, sir. The laws go and preach. The kingdom is at hand. Let me see if I can get it this way. Kingdom is at hand. Let me see here. Oh yes. 3 2. Let's go to previous verse. Yes. Actually, that's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, let's go to Lost Sheep. Lost. Sheep. Of Israel. Did I get it? sheep oh yeah yes Matthew 10 man I should know that man let's bring it up let's bring it up Matthew 10 Yes, it says here. These two of Yahweh shall send forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. This is all this is all family. This is family affair. You hear that? That's family affair. But here, verse 6, it says what? So but go rather to what? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what did he want us to do? And what, what did he want us to do? Let's go again. Next verse. It says here. And as ye go preach, saying what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what we're here to tell you. The hopeful elect. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's why Yahweh Shai said, Go tell the so called Latinos, blacks, native American, African Americans, now calling themselves who? Brazilian, American, Nigerian, Ghanaian. Uh, no, these are not our names. These are the names that your oppressor gave us. Okay, we are the Hebrew Israelite. The Lord said, Go teach, tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's continue ever happened because in her recent memory, in spite of the fact that she was one of these people who expeditiously prepared, uh, you know, quickly and uh, out of panic almost, and when nothing happened immediately, all of a sudden, you know, the prospect of things happening was very low, which is not to say they're not still prepared, but perhaps now, uh, you know, forgotten you know, how quickly these things can happen. And it's not even so much the event itself that will happen. Even if there is an isolated nuclear incident anywhere in the world at this point, the amount of panic that will be generated 
by that? Could itself be a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts when it comes to the unfolding of SHTF? That in itself, the panic triggered, may in fact be the domino that causes the whole thing to fall and not the actual event in itself. So what I mean is, you know, a nuclear weapon is detonated, people start to panic, and in that hysteria, our government does something, you know, that only exacerbates the problem as opposed to minimizing it. And then, of course, if you detonate a nuclear weapon anywhere on this planet right now, the panic that ensues, the panic buying, is going to it's going to have a couple effects it's going to lead to massive inflation because you know everybody's going to be clamoring for the same things but uh it's it's also going to deplete a lot of resources okay so things are not you're not going to be able to get certain things and in that hysteria and panic it exacerbates all other problems that are tied to geopolitical issues be they financial, trade wars, etc. There has been a U.S. general's warning about the Russian naval presence in the Arctic and in the Atlantic. We're going to talk about that. Chinese influence has exploded and trade. We're going to show you an interactive uh, GIF, I guess it is called, that uh, shows just how China's influence has grown over the years. And we're going to talk about how much of a lie New York's fallout shelters were and how ill-prepared we are to actually endure a nuclear crisis, which is not the case in many other places around the world. So this U.S. General, General Christopher Cavoli, when testifying at a, uh, or, or not testifying, but giving a presentation at the House Committee in Europe, said that much of the Russian military, and this is paraphrased, has not been negatively impacted by this conflict despite Russia's supposed losses. Their submarine patrols into the Atlantic are higher than usual despite their efforts in Ukraine. Basically saying that the Russian military is bigger today than before the invasion. Okay, this is very important to understand. We interviewed Peter Vincent Pry before his untimely passing a little over a year ago when this whole thing was started. And he said, that it's very likely that Russia's strategy is very long term. And I would encourage people to go back and watch this video that we did with him because in my opinion, this is one of the most prescient videos on this topic thus far. I think that everything he is saying is playing out right before our eyes, that a lot of these maneuvers that we're seeing with the Russians are very, very long game and they're not reacting, okay? They're playing chess, and I've been saying this all along. I suppose I want to bring this article in, and let's read a bit of this family. It says here, Medvedev. And Medvedev, for those who don't know him, used to be the former pre uh, Russia president, but now he's like, he's, he has a, right now, he's one of the uh, the guy in charge, in charge of uh, security. I think it is the head security of the country. Anyway, let's, let's read it. It says, Medvedev sees no point in maintaining diplomatic relationship with Poland. Things are about to escalate. Here, what he says, according to the deputy chairman of the Security Council, Poland should not exist. You hear that? Poland, Poland should not exist. And Poland is one of NATO members. We know that Article 5 says any member of the, any NATO member that is attacked, the rest of the NATO countries, which is, I believe, right now is 21. No, sorry, 31. I think Finland just joined, so we made it 31. Uh, they will. So think about it, 31 countries coming against Russia. I mean, this is lead. This is Ted. It's going to be nuclear. It's going to be nuclear. And that's the time that we are living in. It says here, as long as there's no one in power except Russia Forbes, according to the deputy chairman of the Security Council, Poland should not exist for Russia. As long as there's no one in power except Rus 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 Russophobes. It says here, Moscow, April 29th, which is today. It says, Taz, Russia sees no sense in maintaining diplomatic relationship with Poland as long as anti-Russian forces remain in power. Russia's Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev wrote on his Twitter page on Saturday. I see no point in maintaining diplomatic relationship with Poland. This 
state must not exist for us while there is no one but Russia folks in power and Ukraine is full of Polish mercenaries who should be ruthlessly exterminated like stinking rats. Medvedev wrote in English and Polish. Medvedev tweet was posted in the wake of the situation with the school at the Russian embassy in Warsaw. That's what uh, was his name mentioned. Uh, Nate mentioned earlier in this article. There's, uh, sorry, in this video. Let's see if there's. Um, I think there's another one here. Yeah, just to to cover the Middle East. Today, Iran prize, uh, prime. Uh, it says Iran uh, president. Let's 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 read it. It's a one America in Iraq is too much. Iran's leaders assail U.S. Pres presence in Middle East. So long story short, it's my family. These nations don't want anything to do with America. They want America out of the Middle East. Yes, they want America out of the Middle East. Right now, America is openly stealing oil in Syria. Openly, family. Because why? That's his blessing. The sword is his blessing. But before, these nations were sitting back and watching America steal resources but now guess what now they have the backing of who in the uh they have the backing of russia now they have the backing of china and this is the laws doing yahweh bahashem yahweh because the major war is going to be in the middle east what is happening in russia and ukraine right now family is just a warm-up the major war the, the war the jehovah shepherd where the lord says he's going to bring all these armies together that's right to judge them let's bring it out let's go to the book of joel chapter 3 quickly joel joel 3 joel chapter 3 verse uh let's pick it up from verse uh verse uh verse verse 9 let's read the nlt let's get the new living translation it says here joel 3 9 it says uh here it says, say to the nations far and wide. It says, get ready for war. Call out your best warriors. Let all your fighting men advance for the attack. Hammer your plowshares into swords. And we know that modern day swords are what? Your drone, your uh, your drones, your aircraft, your, 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 uh, what is it called? Your tanks and, uh, Whatever weaponry, the, 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 whatever the, the latest technology that these people have invested as, uh, in, their, in their military, their submarine family, that's your more, this, these are the modern day swords. Because the ancient time family, people grab their spears, they grab their machetes, and they grab all type of, uh, uh, what is it called, hammers, and they are off to war. But this time, it is in this modern day warfare family, you're talking about drones, eh? you're talking about. Uh, um, uh, what is it called? Missiles, eh? ICBMs that can go from one continent to the other. These are the modern day swords. It says here, hammer your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Train even your weaklings to, the, uh, to be warriors. It says here, come quickly, come quickly, all you nations everywhere, gather together in the valley. And now, oh Lord, Yahweh, call out your warriors. Eh? It says, let the nations be called to arms. Let them march to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I, the Lord, will sit to pronounce judgment on them all. The valley of Jehoshaphat. That's where the Lord is going to judge them. The family of the precept just popped into my spirit. Uh, let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation. Uh, 16 i believe 16 12 revelation 16 12 what does it say uh where is that it says here revelation 16 12 then the sixth angel poured out his bow his, his bowl on the great Euphrates river and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies towards the west without hindrance so that's where they're all going to be gathering. I want to bring something quickly. Let's go to, uh, let's go here. Because family prophecies are, prophets are jumping off the pages. Uh, images of, let's go to images. Images of the Euphrates River. Look at how 
Look at how dry the river is. Let's go back to, where is it? Images. This is the Euphrates River family. And it's drying quickly. What did the Lord says in the book of Revelation? Look, look, look at, look, see, this, the family, we have the true word of prophecy. Let's go back to Revelation. Was it Revelation? Yeah, Revelation uh, 16, right? 16, 12. Let's bring it up. Rev 16. Revelation 16, 12. It says here. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that what? The way of the kings of the east might be prepared. For what? Armageddon. Okay, that's the, that's the third world war. Okay, that's the third world war. And as I, I just showed you, you see how the river is drying up. Look at the land right now, family. This was used to be uh, the biggest river. Family, you know how close we are. Look at the images. We can make this up. That's why we give honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hey? This thing is dried up for what? Prepare for Third World War. That's where the, that's where the fight is going to happen. Family, hey? That's where everything is gonna is gonna take place. Let me bring this out quickly. I want to show you something. Let's go to. Uh, let me bring uh, my. Uh, let's bring this one. I want to go to the book of. Let's go to Second uh, Ezra's. I believe it's thirteen. Is it thirteen? Because the Lord is gonna show up. I know I brought this up many times. It says here. Uh, let's read a bit of this. It says here. Because the Lord is showing up in the midst of the third world war. What time, what hour, what month, I do not know. Even he himself doesn't know. Because he, when the apostles ask him, he says, No, only my father know that, that day. Yahweh Shai himself, not even the angels, nobody knows the day that he's going to make an entrance. But he told us, he told us that he's going to show up in the midst of the war. Which is the last war, the third world war. He says here, 2 Ezra chapter 13. And it came to pass after seven days, I dream a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, and it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man walked strong with thousands of heavens. You hear that? The man walked strong with thousands of heavens. The thousands of heavens, you can get that in what? Um, Psalm 68 verse 17. It says the Lord comes with what? Thousands and thousands of angels. Okay, for what? To family to put down this kingdom, uh, Esau's kingdom. And I beheld and lo, that man walked strong with thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it fleeth the fire. And after this, I beheld a Lord that was gathered together a multitude of men. And that the multitude of men is what? The rest of the nations and their armies. Because again, when Yahweh Shai comes, they're going to put their differences aside and fight the second coming of our Lord. It says, verse 5, 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 5 says, And after this, I beheld and lo, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Finally, the chariot that the king was riding on looks like a mountain. You hear that? The chariot, the so-called UFO that the Lord, our king is coming in. Finally, it looks like a mountain to fight Esau and his army. Finally, they don't stand a chance. But they're going to fight though. The Lord says he's going to put the spirit in them to fight. It says here, verse 6, But I beheld, and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Verse 7, it says, But I would have seen the region or place where, where, where out the hill was graven, but I could not. Ezra is looking around and saying like, Whoa, what is this? This thing is huge. Which, where, 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 which mountain? Where did he grave this thing from? But he couldn't see. From, that's how big it was. 
That's the, sh the ship that the king is coming in. Family, oh, it's going to cover the sky. It's going to cover the sky. That's his glory, family. Oh, we are looking forward to that day. Lord willing, Lord willing. We just pray that he will give us the strength to endure to the end. He said, but here, but I would have seen the region or a place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid. Are you listening to this? All these nations and their armies, the Russia, China, India, all these nations, family, when they saw it, they were so afraid. That's what is coming. That's, that's what is coming. These are not my words, family. This is what the uh, angel Uriel revealed to who? Ezra. Our beloved prophet. This is what the angel revealed to him. He says here, but I would have seen, says here, verse, verse 8. And after this, I beheld. Hmm? And lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid. And yet does fight. So he's going to allow them to fight. He says here, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held the sword nor any instrument of war. You hear that? He wasn't carrying no M16s, or any weaponry. But here, how did he destroy them? It says here, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth. This is coming out of the chariot. Listen to what came out of the chariot. As it had been a blast of fire, this is what is coming out of his chariot. And the chariots of all these angels. Out of, it says here, let me repeat. Let me slow this down. Because this thing is so good, family. You have to marinate it. Let it marinate. Because these nations, they are so proud about their drone. They are, what is it called? They are submarines and their aircraft. They are, uh, what is it called? Air aircraft carriers. Who got, who got the big ones and family. But here, we are rejoicing in the fact that the king is coming. Eh? Our big brother, Yahawashah, is coming to subdue all these nations. It's not going to be China. It's not going to be Russia after the Third World War. It's going to be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, sitting on his throne. That is what is coming. And we are extremely excited. It says here, But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, eh? Coming out of the chariot, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together. Remember, all these elements were mixed together. Remember, yes, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. And burn them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. Nothing remained, family. Nothing remained, but only dust and smell of smoke. It says, When I saw this, I was afraid. You hear that? Ezra saw this. And family, he said he was afraid. The angel Uriel revealed to him exactly what is going to happen in the last days. So family, that alone, the Lord Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahusha deserves the glory. You see the river Ephrates drying up. All these nations preparing for war. Eh? Uh, what was the article that I was reading? Let's go back to here. I was reading an article here. What is it? Uh, this one here. Yeah. So here. You have the uh, the Middle East now coming together to kick America out. And America is not going to just sit back and take it. No, because family, they've been controlling the world for all these years. It's hard for them to see somebody else telling them what to do. And this is how the Lord set it up. Their currency, the world reverse, re, sorry, the world reserve currency is losing power. Yes, no, most nations are now walking away from it. Now we have the brick system set up. And this is going to force America to go to war. And it's going to be beautiful. And that's what we are waiting for. It says one America in Iraq is too much. Iran's leader, I see U.S. presence in Middle East. 
Supreme Leader President host Iraq PM in Tehran. Remember Iraq and Iran, they were arch enemies. But now look at it. The Lord is bringing all those nations together. Saudi Arabia made peace with Iran. Syria is making peace with Turkey, Iran, and all the Arab nations. Who's doing that? Our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, to prepare for what? The war of Armageddon. The war to end it all war. Because all these people that we, you, see, you, you are looking at, sitting around all these kings of these nations, they are going to be the first crop of slaves in the kingdom. Because all these nations, whoever survived, like the Lord says, they're all going into slavery. That's what is coming. Yes. That's what is coming. And we give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, Iran's supreme leader and president both slammed the United States presence in the Middle East as Tehran hosted the president of neighboring the president sorry the pre the president of neighboring Iraq for wide region talks on Saturday. Decades old arch enemies. You hear that decades old arch enemies because Iran and Iraq went to war and America supported what? Iraq during the Saddam Hussein days. And they use chemical weapon on Iran. That's what America does. America divide and conquer. That's their MO. They come, they create chaos. Why are you both fighting each other? They are stealing your resources. That's Esau. That's Esau. That's why the Lord is bringing change. Mm -hmm. He did it so many times that he thought he would be getting away with it forever. No, 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 no. It was only for a period of time. And the time has come. And the Lord is bringing all these nations together to fulfill his will. Honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yahweh is his name. That's right. And his only begotten son, the king of Israel. He is coming. Family, I just read to you. When he shows up, he's going to destroy all these nations and their armies. That's what is coming. It says here, both, it says both helped Iraq to defeat the Islamic State group. And the U.S. Sorry, no, I, I didn't read it. Decades old arch enemies, the U.S. and Iran have vied for influence in Iraq since the 2003 American invasion toppled detector Saddam Hussein. Both helped Iraq to defeat the Islamic State group and the U.S. still has 2,500 non-combat troops in the country to provide it with advice and training. Some 900 U.S. troops remain in Syria, most in the Kurdish-administered Northeast as part of U.S.-led coalition battling remnants of ISIS and the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet is based in Bahrain across the gulf from iran americans are not friends with anyone listen to this americans are not friends with anyone and are not even loyal to their european friends ayatollah ali Khamenei said at his meeting with iraq president abdul latif rashid the supreme leader's website even the presence of one america in iraq is too much Earlier, Rashid met President Ibrahim Rasi and held a joint news conference. You see the time that we are living in? Let's see what other article that I think I wanted to share this. Um, it says U.S. troop drill, drill for Taiwan war. So they want to fight Russia. They want to fight China over Taiwan. This is, the see, that's the Lord doing it. Because remember, the Lord has put that spirit that he put in Pharaoh. When any time Moses went to tell Pharaoh to let his people go, Pharaoh said, what? No, no, no. The Lord is hardening the hearts of Pharaoh right now. That's right. The Edomite, the kings of the Edomite. That's what the Lord is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Biden administration. The Lord is hardening their heart. Eh? But the Lord's spirit is upon them to fulfill his will. That's why family, everything is moving according to plan. And again, all praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. Army Special Forces have for the first time reportedly practiced defending against a Chinese attack on the self-governing island. This is what America is doing. The U.S. Army Special Operations Command has reportedly carried out drills simulating its response to a Chinese seizure of Taiwan for the first time. Reflecting rising concern in Washington that Beijing may try to seize control of the self-governing island by force. They are, they've always had one uh, China policy, saying that China, uh, Taiwan was part of China. But now all of a sudden, America said, no, 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 that doesn't exist anymore. So they're going to fight China over, over uh, Taiwan. Family, we are so blessed that this is actually happening in our lifetime. We are extremely blessed. Yes. 
I don't want this. I think this is this. Is, this has gone on for too long. Let me see. Let me see what else can um. Did I miss something here? Yeah, the day of the Lord is coming, family. The day of the Lord is coming. Let's go to my favorite. Let's go to the book of. Uh, let's bring out Zephaniah. 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 I know. Uh, the day. Uh, let's go to no, Amos. Amos three. No, is it Amos five? Amos five eighteen. Amos five eighteen, I believe. Amos five eighteen. Is it eighteen? Listen to this family. The coming judgment it says here. Amos 5.18 Let's read uh, It says here, this is the NLT The New Living Translation it says here, Amos 5.18 What sorrow awaits you Who say, if only the day of the Lord were here It says, you Have no idea what you are wishing for That the day will bring Darkness, not light hmm. Zephaniah also reminded us that It says here, Amos 5.19 In that day, you will be like a man Who runs from a lion only to meet a bear. Escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against a wall in his house and he is bitten by a snake. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of joy or hope. We are so grateful that we have this truth because the two, uh, for one third of our people, that's right, the elect, we're going to be rejoicing. But those who don't know the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahushai, that's exactly how it's going to feel for them. That's how it's going to feel. Let me see if I can close it. Let's close down. Let's close it with uh, the thing. Let me bring Zephaniah. This is Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3, I think from the 14 down. Oh, what happened here? Oh, is it Fenaya? What is it Fenaya? The Fenaya three fourteen. Is it this stuff for thirteen? Let's go. Oh, yeah, 14. Sorry about that. Let's read it. Let's go. It says, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly. If in the voice of the day of the Lord, it says, The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. It says, That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Long story short, it's just going to be dark everywhere. Chaos, fighting among each other, lack of bread, raping, family, you name it. It's going to be ap apocalyptic. Yes, anarchy. That's, that's, that's what the day of the Lord is going to be like. He says here, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fence cities and against the high towers. He says, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. Hey? Because if you think about it, the stress that's going to be upon you, family, is going to feel like you can't see anything. The stress alone. People are not going to have, they're not going to know what to do. That's the day of the Lord. It says here, and I will bring the stress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, Yahweh, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Hey? Neither their silver 
You have people investing in uh, cryptocurrency, buying precious metals and all this and that. The Lord, hear what the Lord is saying about that. He said, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in that day of the Lord's wrath. The only people that are going to be delivered are the elect of Israel. And if anybody survives America, nobody's going to survive in America. America is where the Lord is going to have his biggest sacrifice, the altar. America is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what is coming. The Lord said, tell them before it happens. That's what is coming. And we are doing that. It says here, Nef it said, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land, you hear that? The whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. America, the lake of fire. How much is going to come again? Like I know I've said this many times. He says in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, he says, he said it three times throughout the, that chapter. It's going, to, it's going to take one hour. So one hour, the king is saying, one hour from East Coast to West Coast. Think about it. From California to New York, from the North to the South, one hour. That's how the king that's how long the king is going to take. It's like, uh, what does that show again? That movie, Equalizer. Denzel set his watch, boom, to what, 45 seconds or 25 seconds? And then he gets, he, and then he get in, and he started doing his business. That's the Howard Shai. He says one hour. And if the king says it's going to take him one hour, you can bet your house on it. It's going to take the king one hour. I will leave it there, family. I'll put some of these articles in the description box. And I'll put the video also in the description, but you can watch it. I hope I didn't keep you guys too long. But let's, we got to test, we got to, sorry, prophesy and give honor and glory to our power when we see these things happening. He deserved the glory. He deserved the honor because he told us this is exactly what's going to be happening in the last days. And here we are. Everything is happening according to plan. To you, the hopeful in light, continue to stay prayed up. We will go home soon. Okay. But I think we have to endure to the end. Continue to pray. The Lord is with us. The Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He says, I'm going to be with you to the end of the world. That's right, the end of this age. Okay? So the king is with us. The angels are all around us, family. Uh, the angels are all around us. To you, the hopefully elect, as he shall warm again. Honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. It's his name and his only begotten son, our king, our redeemer, our savior, Yahweh Shai.